Hey folks, welcome to an Extreme Reloading special edition. You know, a couple of weeks ago I released a video and there were a number of questions and comments that were pretty darn similar. Now, rather than spend a lot of time typing out the answers in depth in that comment section, I thought it best to do a follow-up video and answer the question in good detail using video to demonstrate what I'm trying to talk about. That question was, what is the effect of the shell holder on that resizing process? Stand by, we're going to dig right in and answer that question. Now, to answer this question, let me begin by providing just a quick overview of that resizing process. One thing that is important is to examine and inspect every one of the cases that you're going to be reloading. And one of the things that I've talked about in numerous other videos is to look at that head, look at the rim. If it's bent, then I discard that case. And one of the notes or comments on that previous video I was alluding to was that's, that same idea, that a bent case head or rim can affect how that case itself sits in the shell holder. No doubt about it. That is true. That is correct. I don't deal with that because what I'm doing is I am discarding, I'm chucking those cases because the resizing process cannot fix a bent case. That's one of the reasons why. Number two, especially in the semi-auto rifles, that bent case can cause a future failure to extract or something like that. So two good reasons to discard those cases when you find that sort of thing in that inspection process. Wipe that thing down and then of course we're going to lube that case correctly and then what I do while I'm waiting for that lube to dry is I will examine the inside of that case and look for an incipient case head fracture. A little nick on the inside of the case, normally just above the web. But this video isn't all about that stuff. I want to focus on the role of the shell holder. Now when you're setting up that resizing die, the initial setup for that resizing die, certainly read the instructions provided by the manufacturer. There are sometimes some slight differences recommended by that manufacturer, and you should, you should definitely follow those. But the majority of full-length resizing dies, resizing dies in general, will require that you first of all seat the shell holder in the ram of that reloading press. Now, there are several companies that manufacture shell holders. This one here in particular is a shell holder number three, manufactured by RCBS. I've had this a long time. This works perfectly well. This is suited for the 308 Winchester. And I just picked up for this video a Hornady shell holder, shell holder number one. The numbers can be different based on the manufacturer. And this is also for the 308 Winchester. So you're going to install that shell holder in the ram of the press. And let me say this, it doesn't matter if the die is made by RCBS and the shell holder is made by Hornady or Lyman or Redding or any of these other manufacturers you can mix and match die and shell holder without any problem. So, we insert the shell holder in the ram of the press and then we raise the ram to the top of its stroke. Then, we're going to thread in the resizing die and we're going to stop when we feel the base of the die make contact with the surface of the shell holder. Now we're going to lower the ram and then turn the resizing die down about an eighth of a turn. And that's our initial setting. Once again, 
raise the ram, and as you approach the top of the stroke, you should feel resistance, almost a pop type of feel in the handle. And as you fully lower the handle and raise the ram, that pop feel is called a cam over, cam over. And for that initial setting, we'll now go ahead and tighten the lock ring on that resizing die. Are we done? No. No, now we have to test it. So now again, we're going to take that case that we previously inspected, we lubed it, we checked it, all that good stuff like that. This is a good case. Now we're going to resize that one particular case. Then we're going to test that case. We can check that case in a headspace gauge, uh, the gauges that I was using in that previous video. Numerous ways to check that, and if you wanted, you could kind of give it the reality test, right? Drop it into the chamber, empty case, drop that into the chamber um, of your rifle and see if it um, causes any problems when you cycle the bolt or those sorts of things. You can do that, but you'll find it much easier to make those measurements or use the case gauges that I was demonstrating in the previous video. Now, if the case does not pass that test, well, you can loosen the lock ring on that die, drop it a little bit more. I like to use 1 8 inch turns, tighten it up again, try it, try that same case, try that same case, use another case if you like to, uh, and test it once again. Now, there's only so much adjustment that you can make in that cam over uh, method or process, uh, but almost always, for most rifles, that die is going to full length resize it. It's going to resize that case perfectly well to cycle in most rifles. Now, not all rifles, and in fact, as we saw in that um, previous video that I've been referring to, we had some problems with some individual uh, 308 rifles. Now, here is where I think we're starting to have some misunderstanding about the role of the shell holder in that resizing process. As I said earlier, you can mix and match RCBS dies with Hornady shell holders, Hornady dies with RCBS shell holders, or Lyman shell holders, whatever you like. That is all part of that setup process. Once you have set up that resizing die, and you find that, yes, this works perfectly well, it's affecting the correct shoulder bump that I want, it's resizing, everything's working just perfectly fine uh, in the gauges, all the different tests in my rifle. Okay, now you've got a, a system set up. Think of those two pieces, the resizing die and the shell holder, as a unit at this point going forward. Now, you cannot change the shell holder at this point without having to go back and set up that resizing die once again. You cannot make the assumption that, well, my resizing die is, is fine. I set it up. It works perfectly well. Um, I just heard that this Redding shell holder is so much better, so I'm going to use that one instead. You might start having some problems. You may not, but very likely you will because the dimensions on the shell holder vary from brand to brand. Yes, even though they're both made for 308 Winchester or 30 odd six, anything like that, the dimension of the shell holder will vary. Let's compare a few of these shell holders. Again, this is shell holder number three from RCBS, and we'll be comparing it to shell holder number one from Hornady. Both of these can be used for the 308 Winchester. Look at this area here on the base of the holder. This is where the head of the case or the rim of the case is going to sit. And now let's take a look at the distance from that point to the top of the shell holder. This is where the die is going to make contact with that shell holder. Let's also look at the total, if you want to call it the thickness or the height of the shell holder itself. Notice that there are differences. A couple thousandths of an inch here, a couple thousandths of an inch there. 
clearly showing us that the RCBS shell holder, perfectly good shell holder, is different from the Hornady shell holder. And if I happen to have a Redding, an alignment, etc., etc., shell holder, also for the 308 Winchester, I could measure all of those. And I bet every one of those would be slightly different in some of these different dimensions. So, does the brand of the shell holder affect our resizing? Yes, but only as far as that goes. And what I mean is, think back to what we were talking about before. Once we set up our resizing die using a specific brand of shell holder, then at that point, we cannot change the brand of the shell holder without having to go back and reset or set up once again that resizing die. Like everything else that we do in reloading, if we change a component in that reloading process, we have to kind of start over again. If we change the powder, we can't just assume that, you know, 42 grains of Varget is going to produce the exact same results as 42.0 grains of RL15. No, that is not a safe assumption. Same thing applies here. We're changing a part in this process, the shell holder, and we cannot expect the same exact results. Now I know some folks have got their favorite brands and they're very loyal to Hornady or RCBS or whatever. I don't have favorite brands. I have favorite quality. I have quality that I like. Repeatability, precision, that's what I like. And you know, over time, a given company can be producing some excellent stuff at one time, and then over the years you might see their quality slip and slide. I would move away from those at that point, because I don't have loyalty to that brand. I have loyalty to quality and to precision. Well, that hopefully clears some things up. If you have some questions, comments, ideas about what I just talked about, please post those in that comments section below. And as always, thanks a bunch for watching.